many years ago when I was still living in London, I got to do a play called Reunion, and the actress who played my daughter in that, and I have since become really close friends. She's become a theater director, and she now lives, uh, well, she doesn't live in New Zealand, but she was brought there to direct the Shakespeare play. And, um, and then the pandemic shut her down. She's been there for a year, can't, can't get out. But um, anyway, she's in touch with a lot of people there. And uh, one of the people there said, uh, asked her if they would ask me if I could write a short article called Shakespeare in Hawaii. Mm. So um, I'm doing that and I'm gonna include, I, I won't mention your names if you don't want me to, but I'm gonna mention being in, I'm gonna mention Jim um, that we do uh, every once, twice a month. We do Shakespeare in uh, on Sunday. Hawaii Shakespeare Festival. Uh, Jerry and I did nine seasons together. And That's that right. I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot to check the Shakespeare. <laughs> I don't Festival. know if that means anything. Is <laughs> no, I'll include it. I d I don't know when the very first production of any Shakespeare play was done here. Probably in the late 1800s or early 1900s. Yeah, but, we uh, had that wonderful display. You were there at Capulani Community College and they had newspaper articles with uh, uh, Hamlet being the first production, but I can't remember exactly what it was or who oh, it was, rather. Oh, right, right. That was a marvelous display for all the Shakespeare in Hawaii. Right. I wonder where is it now? They brought it out for the display, but where do they keep it? Like Well, it... Uh, of course, traveled with the uh, folio edition. Yeah. Uh, but I think most of the things in Hawaii were uh, kept there at KCC. Okay. And uh, I, I can't think of the guy's name. The gentleman's name that was in Comedy of Errors with you. Um, um, you mean the junior Lawhorn? Yes. Yes. Lawhorn. I can't remember his first name offhand. offhand. Yeah, I can't either. Mark is the father's name. That's it. Would be so, Mark. Yeah, he's the senior. Right. So, Peter, Mark Lawhorn. I'm writing I, this down. L A W what? H O R N. H O R N. Okay. Right. That was in 2016. So, that's only like, what, seven years ago. Yeah, he should was, still be there. You quoted Shakespeare left and right to him. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. And what's left? Uh, our, 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 sorry. Our, 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 our. Yeah, I still have that wonderful picture that you were not in. <laughs> we, all gathered, we all gathered around the uh, folio and... oh gesticulated oh uh oh <laughs> did, did that what? set the alarm off yeah all the guards yeah yeah we detected some gesticulating <laughs> yeah <laughs> dreadful dreadful mark lawhorn is still there at kcc i imagine so yeah. i would think so like it it's only been what seven years now that 2016 would be uh, the date. The first folio going um, to KCC was probably my first uh, serious YouTube video. Because ah. I finally figured out how to put one scene and connect it to the other. Good. There's my I'd, I'd love to see that. I can send you the link. It's still okay. up. It's just Thank you well. way back there. Ah, that's my twin tonight. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> You're looking magnificent. <laughs> Magnifico. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Magnificent. He's, he's armed. He's armed yeah. and hand also. <laughs> Looks like a wizard. 1982 yeah. wizard. I thought the, the note was to come in costume. There he is. Is that right? Yes, I did. 
All right. This is what I had to come up with. I went to the closet. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't have a costume. I'll, be, I'll go. I'll find something. <laughs> I'll find something. Hang on. I'll be right back. We're looking at my wires right now. The only one that I know that has that Shakespeare cane. It's an Abel cane. An Abel cane. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> it's got the noggin. The shakes the bard noggin. <laughs> Don't get in the way of the bard. <laughs> I got, this at, I got this at a Goodwill in Kailua. I really? Knew. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? amazing. That is amazing. How <laughs> I was like, oh my God, look what's over here in the bin. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom, the bottom is a little book that has Romeo and Juliet written on the outside. Oh. Ah, very and cool. And a script inside? Yeah, tiny though. Tiny. <laughs> really tiny, tiny, tiny. Discovered its original use. <laughs> and the quill, you see the quill? I do indeed. I remember seeing that when you uh -huh, were- Ah, there we go. Bravo. <laughs> I remember seeing that when uh, you were in Enchanted Lakes. Uh -huh. Well, that's why I was enchanted, you know. I, <laughs> nice outfit, Peter. That was good. Thank you. The whole thing. Oh, I made it right. Go. Oh, my so, goodness, yes. All, to robe and all. all. The way down. <laughs> <laughs> don't totally good. It, but uh, glad I have it. And a crown? Or? No, I don't have a crown. I can't. With the earphones, I can't put anything on my head. Oh, that's right. Well, the crown is your earphones. Yes, that's it. That's it. No. It's a black I have uh, I have ear problems, so I can't put plugs in my ears. I gotta have a headphone. <laughs> oh, that's called oh, an earworm. Oh my gosh! It? Look at what he's got. I know. He's telling us that he got it in Kailua at a Goodwill store. Uh oh, hang on. Come right back. <laughs> he's gonna one up me. I can feel it. Yes, he's gonna go get his cane. Yeah. The game is on. Ah, yes. The game is on. That's it. Does it? Out of my way. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Better. Oh, good. Definitely better. That's Matter of good. fact. I don't know if this. That's um, good. Nice oh, Jewish. the dog. Well, I, I was, I was actually sick as a dog for two days before this, though. <laughs> oh, like, really? Oh my uh, gosh! Yeah. It was a full oh, moon that did it. I don't know. It must be Miraz Miraz or something. I, I don't know. Uh, okay. But yeah, hey. feeling feeling chipper now. All right. <laughs> Here's I have my no offering. idea. Hi, hi, ouch. Out of my offering ouch. for whipping. Yeah. That, that, yikes. All right, Mike, should I go get the weapon that I have? Peter, yes. what is, what's that handy for, you know? Uh, it belonged to my dad. I don't remember where he got it, but uh, I kept it. Really? How yeah. About this baby. No. Yeah. Ow. I've yeah. seen that, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, No. <laughs> Unsheath. Uh. <laughs> good, good for shaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that was a veils, close shave. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, ignorant. Oh, oh. oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. The game. The game. Friggin' what the barracuda knife. Oh. The, Hindus, <laughs> the Hindus in Bali wear them in their belt on their way to church, on their way to temple. And it's not for fighting, it's for cutting the veil of ignorance. I guess you Cutting the veil of fight. ignorance sounds like almost a fight. <laughs> yeah, the, that's true. To get yeah. into the argument <laughs> after church, 
I shall cut the veil of ignorance. No, no, no. <laughs> Nonviolence. Oh my God, look, it's Braveheart. <laughs> you got a Excalibur. What do you got there, Jim? This was made by a good friend of mine named Mike DeCaza. Back, oh, really? back in his carving days. Oh. Oh, that's a nice piece of work, yeah. Yes, it is. I should use it as a cane and since I don't have the Shakespeare. <laughs> and it's got J.H. carved in it. And I thought I had another one that had Mike DeCasa. Oh yeah, there it is. It's got uh, M and a Y uh, put on the other side. So it's right at the top of the... I think we use that on stage uh, for the Fantastic, right? Um, I don't... I don't know what else. Well, the very first time that I used it was the summer you gave it to me. And that was the Hawaii Shakespeare Festival, Henry the uh, Fourth, Part One. Oh. All staff and all the gang, and uh, because I was definitely not going to use one up Tony Pasquale's metal swords, and so I said, "How about if I carry this?" And you had just presented it to me, I think about a week before we opened. So, oh yeah, that's fine. Because I all I had to do is slay all around and and hold it up, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank God I didn't have to do any fighting. Are they doing a season this year? Yes. Uh, uh, gosh, one is at the mission, um, the mission house, and I, gosh, I should have written it down. But I think one of them is Midsummer Night's Dream. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep thinking that uh, one of them is Much Ado, because they haven't done that one yet. Uh, Are they still at Mark's Garage? Oh, no. They've never been at Mark's Garage. You're talking about, uh, okay, wait a minute. Uh, yes, Mark's Garage has one production there. I'm the talking about but you mean yeah, yeah. But Tony, Tony is directing uh, one with all ladies. I forget what it is, but there's also one being done out at Leeward, um, and the third one, of course, is at, at uh, Mission Houses. Sure. Uh, punch it up as Hawaii Shakespeare Festival, and you can find it on Facebook. I always make fun. Of it. Thank so you. One, all ladies is called a uh, casting couch. <laughs> the casting couch. <laughs> the director. It's called. No, he just opens up his little black book. That's all he has to do. Yeah. What's, a, what's a, um, all ladies is Midsummer Night's Dream? Mm. No, I don't think Tony's doing Midsummer. He's probably doing something involving swords. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's his uh, forte. <laughs> Anyway, um, well, Demetrius, yeah, no, actually, that the way I met Tony was he came in. Uh, I think he was like an assistant when I did a fellow. Yes, Kumu. He came yes. in, helped with the the fight scenes that I did. So I would think so. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's still known for all that uh, stuff. But uh, yeah, he's getting pretty excited. Arriving with your beautiful wife, and we would like to know what show you would like to do with your R and J. R and J. Interesting. So you're going to play the apothecary. Oh, <laughs> Jim, I can't touch that role. Yeah, that's I right. Saw, I saw you on the Big Island. You just amazed me. You came uh, from out of something. I mean, it was extraordinary. I was like, oh my God, there's Jim. <laughs> That's the second time that I did it, because in 1976, uh, Lee Stetson direct us, directed us in it. And uh, Kelly Ray, if you remember Mike, <laughs> was Romeo. Yeah, was, Romeo struggled mentally with the role. I know. The, uh, 
newspaper said, yes. He was going bald already at the time, unfortunately. Uh, Ellen Boggs was Juliet, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh and my God. Lee, I think, played the father, didn't she? Or uh, was it? He played Montague, yes. I, I'm, I'm trying to think who. Much to my chagrin. <laughs> Wasn't it? Uh, 10 seconds at the beginning of the play, and then I had to sit around for two and a half, three hours. You played cards white, backstage. White shoe polish in my hair <laughs> until I was on for another 10 seconds at the end of the play. <laughs> And they actually cut some of my line. <laughs> Ow! Got some good chess in, though. Yeah, you did indeed. Uh, am I right, though? It wasn't Lee Stetson that directed it. It was uh, the other guy. Um, I know Lee played um, Juliet's father. He yeah. might have also directed it. Uh, or, or maybe it was Louis Stout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he directed it and gave himself a good, uh, good role. He was great in it, actually. He was really good in <coughs> that part. And well, he, he, would, you know, he would do the anger scene really well, I'm sure. Yeah, he was, he was really dead on it. <laughs> That's and right, and, Richard. Uh, I remember you, you drove me down to my little house in South Kona. Dropping me off in the dark, and I had to jump over a fence. Oh God, yes, that was a little scary, Jim. Yeah, right. <laughs> On the big guy, that's uh -huh. the way to be. Yeah. <laughs> Lilani is brave to take up Cressida. Yay, Lilani! <laughs> Yay! You've played uh -huh. it a couple of times more uh, before, I think, Lilani. You know, it's a strange thing. I can't really remember. <laughs> I, I can give you the date if it means anything. This is a good part of my mind. Oh. <laughs> I think Ajax is over with, so I can pick up Agamemnon. Yeah. That was what is it? Finishing this and starting another one. Yeah. <laughs> you call me. Just go right into as you like it. Yeah, <laughs> or all's well is what we want. All's well as you like it. <laughs> yeah. The part former one, yeah, I, in the my part career, one. I am now lost in space. What you said. Well, I might have it in my try list. That's the part one. Part one. Oh, wait. Those are the. Hi. Hi, Una. Hi, Hi Una. Una. Hi, Una. <laughs> Hi. So, which uh, scene are you reading from? I think we're Act Three, Scene Three. I think. Act Three, Scene Three. Yes. Hey, have you guys heard of this play? Something <laughs> bird? Oh, Mac Bird. Yes. Yeah. Only Mac should do. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it out there. All right. Interesting thing to read. Because I don't know. It's be hard. I got this at the library. You know, 67, 68, I think it was produced. Yes. Yes. Mac Bird. Yeah. It's, like <laughs> a, it's kind of a parody of the Scottish Oh, okay. About Kennedy assassination. And, you know, oh. So it's really, it's interesting. And it's it's actually, I started reading again. It's pretty well done. So I don't know. There might be some sleuths there in the group that could find. Uh, I've tried to find online if there's, you know, more copies of it. It was actually, if anybody remembers, what was, it was a magazine that, uh, published large sections of it in the hey, 60s. Playbill? Yep. Mikey, check not, it. No, yeah. not Playbill. No. Sorry. It's a spoof on the JFK assassination, too? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's the idea that, you know, the Kennedys are, uh, you know, the guy that gets killed at the beginning of the play, the, the other Scottish king, and then. Uh -huh. 
It's uh, and then they do a play on the names of the the characters. So, oh. Three Witches, MacBird, Lady MacBird, Ken O'Dunk, Robert, the Earl of Warren, the Wayne of Morris, Lord McNamara. <laughs> Very interesting, yeah. Well, maybe try and find it online. If it's online, then I can well, it. that's what you know. I. I I suddenly remembered it. I had a copy of it a long time ago, and then I got it out of the library. But I, so far, I haven't found anything online that you know gives you the play itself. So, yeah, my friend uh, lent me this book that I was able to read. It was paperback, done in like you know sixty whatever afterwards, sixty four ish, five ish, and it was something like a. Uh, Texan talks about a Texan or something like that. It's simply, but the book itself was taken off the shelves because it was the book was about the rise of LBJ, mm. Mm. and it had so much. Like if you read this book, your your conclusion, oh my God, the guy's like a dirty mobster and he's probably behind it all. I mean, it was just a ruthless rise to power, and. Uh. Um, Considering he was vice president at that time, but it's it's a wicked book. And the surprising thing about it is that it was on actual bookshelves, and then it was taken off. Uh, it disappeared. Uh, it's kind of it's hard to find a paperback of it, but I'm sure you could probably see a cover of it or something. I'm sure. I mean. Ramparts. That's the magazine. There was a, a magazine called Ramparts in the I 60s. Remember that? Yeah, and they serialized MacBird. Oh. So yeah, it was really interesting. It was a great magazine too. Yeah. We both followed it, but I didn't remember that being the title. Yeah, that yeah. Was... The, you know, it came out. It, it, it was like a couple of years. It was a really far left. Magazine, but so it fit with MacBird, but yeah, it was not. Okay, Una, here you go. You're Paris. I'm Paris. Okay, okay. yep. You and stand by. Up. I'm sure yeah. you're more. <laughs> yeah, with a Parisian accent. Oh, oh. Una, Hi. do you have a sword? <laughs> do you have a I sword in the house, Una? Wow. You're yeah, also we, Nestor, we, so where, where is Andrew Mash? Oh, there it is. No. <laughs> we have no Andrew Mash. Okay, that's listed. Uh, that's brilliant. Control. Very nice. Yeah. Say what? That's listed as a woman's role. Una. As... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Helen. Helen of Troy, of all people. Yeah, that, that's the thousand ship base, right? Uh, something like that. Absolutely. The a thousand ships in it. <laughs> that's the famous line, right? Basically, thousand ships. Thousand ships. The thousand five ships. minutes actors. Five minutes. Five minutes actors. That's <laughs> it. Five minutes. I think there the goes. line that you're talking about on Helen Control was this the face? that launched a thousand ships, but that was spoken by our old friend Marlo in his version of uh, something else. Well, it was in this uh, day. That's why it's so good Jim's around. Like, who would know? <laughs> it's, well, in it's, in, it's in Shakespeare in Love, oh. my big, favorite movie. Well, there, there you go. You're just oh again, God. dazzling, dazzling Jim. <laughs> yeah, your history is being written by Hollywood. Ah, good. But it is in this play because I saw it during editing. It's in one of those long monologues. Well, there uh, there is the another case. speech that is in Richard II, I think it is, uh, which uh, Richard looks into the mirror of himself at the end 
And he says, was this the face? And then okay. continues on with his speech. Okay. I'd like to talk to Marlowe. Well, Marlowe is uh, the one that wrote the, the other, was this the face that launched the thousand ships? I love that. Is this the face that launched the thousand ships? Meter, the meter, always. Yeah. Yes. Do we have any more technical is this, questions? Is this the face that launched a thousand ships? Come on. Pendameter. Iambic pendameter, yeah. And then the one guy right. gets up there and tries to say it, but he stutters all through the whole thing. Blah, 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 Oh no, it was to do 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 Scene three, can you hear me? Yo. Yep. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Do it. Scene three, the Grecian camp. Before Achilles' tent, enter Agamemnon, Ulysses, Diomedes, Nestor, Ajax, Menelaus, and Calchas. Now, princes, for the service I have done, the advantage of time and promise prompts me aloud to call for rec recompense. Appear it to mind uh, that through the night I bear in things to come, I have abandoned Troy, left my possession, insecured, incurred a traitor's name, exposed myself from certain and possessed conveniences, the doubtful fortune sequestering from me all that time, acquaintance, custom, and condition made came and most familiar to my nature, and here, do to do you service and become as new into the world, strange, unacquainted, unacquainted, I do beseech you, as in a way of taste, to give me now a little benefit out of those many registered in promise, which, you say, uh, come to live in, uh, by, in by my behalf. What wouldst thou of us, Trojan? Make demand. You have a Trojan prisoner called Antenor. Yesterday took. Troy holds him very dear. Oft have you, often have you, thanks therefore, desired my crescent in right great exchange, whom Troy shall still denied. But this Antenor, I know is such a rest in their affairs that their negotiations all must slack, wanting his menage, and they will almost give us a prince of blood, a son of Priam, in exchange for him. Let him be sent, great princes, and he shall buy my daughter, and his her presence shall quite strike off all service I have done in most accepted pain. Let Diomedes bear him, and bring us Cressid hither. Calchas shall have what he requests of us. Good Diomedes, furnish you fairly for this interchange. Withal bring word, if Hector will tomorrow be answered in this challenge. Ajax is ready. This shall I undertake, and tis a burden which I am proud to bear. And excellent Diomedes and Calchas enter Achilles and Patroclus before their tent. Achilles stands I the entrance of his tent, pleased that our general to pass strangely by him, as if he were forgot. And princes all lay negligent and loose regard upon him. I will come last. Tis like he'll question me why such unplossive eyes are bent on him. If so, I have derision. 
medicinable to use between your strangeness and his pride, which his own will shall have desire to drink. It may be good, pride hath no other glass to show itself but pride. For supple knees feed arrogance and are the proud man's fees. We'll execute your purpose and put on a form of strangeness as we pass along. So do each lord and either greet him not or else disdainfully, which shall shake him more than if not looked on. I will lead the way. What comes the general to speak with me? You know my mind, I'll fight no more against Troy. What says Achilles? Would he aught with us? Would you, my lord, aught with the general? No. <sighs> Nothing, it's... my lord. The better. Good day, good day. Oh. <laughs> oh. We all right, Una? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, what does the cuckold scorn me? How now, Patrocles? Good morrow, Ajax. Ah, good morrow. <laughs> I and good next day too. What means these fellows? Know they not, Achilles? They pass by strangely. They were used to bend to send their smiles before them to Achilles to come as humbly as they used to creep to holy altars. What? Am I poor of late? Tis certain greatness once fallen out with fortune must fall out with men too. What the declined is, he shall as soon read in the eyes of others as feel in his own fall. For men, like butterflies, show not their mealy wings but to the summer. And not a man for being simply man hath any honor but honor for those honors that are without him as place, riches, favor, prizes of accident as oft as merit, which when they fall as being slippery standers, the look, the leaning on them as slippery too, do one pluck down another and together die in the fall. But tis not so with me, fortune and I are friends. I do enjoy at ample point all that I did possess, save these men's looks, who do, methinks, find out something not worth in me, such rich beholding as they have oft given. Here is Ulysses. I'll interrupt his reading. How now, Ulysses? Now, great this the son. What are you reading? Strange fellow here writes me, that man, how, how dearly ever departed, hath how much in having or without or in cannot make boast to have that which he hath, nor feels not what he owes, but by reflection, as when his virtues shining upon others heat them and may retort that heat again to the first giver. This is not strange, Ulysses. That beauty that is born here in the face, the bearer knows not, but commends itself to others' eyes nor doth the eye itself, the most pure spirit of sense, behold itself. Not going from itself, but eye to eye opposed, salutes each other with each other's form. From speculation turns not to itself, till it hath traveled and is nearer there, where it may see itself. This is not strange at all. I do not strain at this, at the position. It is familiar but at the author's drift, who in his circumstance expressly proves that no man is the Lord of anything, though in and of him there be much consisting till he communicate his part to others, nor doth he of himself know them for aught till he behold them formed in the applause, where they are extended, who, like an arch, reverberates, the voice again, or like a gate of steel fronting the sun, receives and renders back his figure and his heart. I was much wrapped in this and apprehended here immediately the unknown Ajax. Heavens, what a man is there, a very horse that has, you know, not what nature, what things there are must, most abject in regard and dear in use, what things again most dear in the esteem and poor in worth. Now, 
we shall see tomorrow. And at that very chance doth throw upon him, Ajax, Ajax renounced, Oh heavens, what some men do while some men leave to do. How some men creep and skirt his fortune's hall while others play the idiots in her eyes. How one man eats into another's pride while pride is fasting in his wantonness. To see these Grecian lords, why, even already they clap the lubber Ajax on, his, on the shoulder, as if his foot were on brave Hector's breast and great Troy shrieking. I do believe it, for they passed by me as misers do by beggars. Neither gave to me good word nor look. What, are my deeds forgot? Time hath my lord a wallet. Famous speech. Sorry, famous speech. Oh, I'm sorry. Time hath my <laughs> lord I knew you'd come up with a them. wallet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wherein he puts arms for oblivion. The great sized monster of ingratitudes. Those scraps are good deeds past, which are devoured as fast as they are made, forgot as soon as done. Perseverance, dear my lord, keeps honor bright. To have done is to hang quite out of fashion, like a rusty mail in momento, monumental mockery. <laughs> Take the instant way, for honor travels in a strait so narrow where one butt goes abreast, keeps them on the path. For emulation hath a thousand sons, that one by one pursue. If you give way or hedge aside from the direct forthright, like to an entered tide, they all rush by and leave you hidden most. Or like a gallant force fallen in the first rank, lie there for pavement to the abject rear or run and trampled on then what they do in present. Though less than yours in past, much o'er top yours, for time is like a fashionable host that slightly shakes his parting guest by the hand and with his arms outstretched as he would fly, grasped in the corner, welcomes ever smiles and farewell goes out sighing. Oh, let not virtue seek remuneration for the thing it was. For beauty, wit, high birth, vigor of bone, desert, desert, desert in service, love, friendship, charity, are subjects all to envious and culminating time. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin, that all with one consent praise newborn gods. Though they are made and molded of things past and give to dust, that is a little guilt, more law than guilt or dusted. The present eye praises the present object. Then marvel not, thou great and complete man, that all the Greeks begin to worship Ajax, since things in motion sooner catch the eye than what not stirs. Then cry went once on thee, and still it might, and yet it may again, if thou wouldest not entomb thyself alive, and case thy reputation in thy tent, whose glorious deeds, but in these fields of late, made emulous missions amongst the gods themselves, and drave great Mars to faction. Ta -da! Of this my privacy, I have strong reasons. But but against your privacy, the reasons are more potent and heroical. Tis known, Achilles, that you are in love with one of Priam's daughters. Ha, huh, known? Is that a wonder? The providence that is a watchful state knows almost every grain of Plutus' gold, finds bottom in the uncomprehensive uncom deeps, keeps pace, place with thoughts, and almost like the gods, does thoughts unveil in their dumb cradles. There is a mystery with whom relations durst never meddle in the soul of state, oh. which hath an operation more divine than breath or pen can give exp expression to. All the commerce that you have had with Troy as perfectly as ours as yours, my lord, 
and better would it fit Achilles much to throw down Hector than Polyxna. Hmm. But it must grieve young Paris now at home when fame shall in our island sound her trump and all the Greek girls shall tripping sing great Hector's sister did Achilles win but our great Hector bravely beat down him farewell my lord I as your lover speak the fool slides o'er the ice that you should break uh, to this effect, Achilles, if I move you, a yeah. woman impudent and mannish grown is not more loathed than an effeminate man in time of action. I stand condemned for this. They think my little stomach to the war and your great love to me restrained you thus. Wait, rouse yourself. And the weak, wanton Cupid shall from your neck unloose his amorous fold, and like a dew drop from the lion's mane, he shook to air. Shall Ajax fight with Hector? Aye, and perhaps receive much honor by him. I see. My reputation is at stakes. My fame is shrewdly gored. Oh, then beware. Those wounds heal ill that men do give themselves. Omission to do what is necessary feels the commission to a blank of danger, and danger like an egg subtly taint, even then when sick I be. Go call Therosides hither, sweet Patroclus. I'll send the fool to Ajax and desire him to invite the Trojan lords after the combat to see us here untamed. Unarmed, I have a woman's longing, an appetite that I'm Hi. sick with all, to see great Hector in his weeds of fruit, no, to talk with him and to behold his visage, I even to my full of so view. When? Or you later, yourself, maybe tomorrow, Kita. or later tonight, okay. How about that? The site is entered. Hey, Wander! What? <laughs> Ajax goes up and down the field asking for himself. How so? He must fight singly tomorrow with Hector and is so prophetically proud of heroical cudgeling that he raves and saying nothing. How can that be? Why he walks up and down like a peacock and stride and stand term ruminates like a hostess that hath no arithmetic but her brain to set down her recording and bites his lip with a politic regard as who should say there were wit in his head <laughs> and put out and so there is, but it lies as coldly in him as fire in a flint, uh, which would not show uh, without knocking. The man's undone forever. <laughs> if Hector break not his neck in the combat, he'll break it himself in vain glory. <laughs> he knows not me, I say. Uh, I said, good morrow, Ajax. And he replied, thanks, Agamemnon. <laughs> and what think you of this man that takes me for a general? <laughs> He's grown a very landfish, languageless, a monster, a plague full of, uh, of opinion. Uh, a man may wear it on both sides like a Leather jerkin. Thou must be my ambassador to him, Thersites. Well, who? Why? Why? He'll answer nobody. He professes in not answering. Speaking as, is for beggars, and he wears his tongue in his arms. I will put on his presence that Patroclus uh, make demands to me. You shall see the pageant of Ajax. To him, Patroclus, 
Tell him I humbly desire the valiant Ajax to invite the most valorous Hector to come unarmed to my tent and to procure a safe conduct for his person of the magnanimous and most illustrious six or seven times honored Captain General of the Grecian Army, Agamemnon, etc. Do this. Ha. Jove bless great Ajax. Ha. I come from the worthy Achilles, <laughs> who most humbly desires you to invite Hector to his tent <laughs> and to procure safe conduct from Agamemnon. Agamemnon? Aye, my lord. Ha! <laughs> what say you to it? God be with you with all my heart. <laughs> Your answer, sir? Well, if tomorrow be a fair day, by 11 o'clock, it will go one way or another. <laughs> Howsoever, he shall pay for me ere he has me. Your answer, sir? Fare you well, with all my heart. Why, he is not in his tune, is he? No, but he's out of tune thus. Uh, what music will be in him when Hector has knocked out his brains, I know not. But I am sure none, none, unless the Fiddler Apollo gets his sinews to make cat strings on. Come, thou shalt bear a letter to him straight. Let me bear another to his horse, for that's the more capable creature. My mind is troubled like a fountain stirred, and I see myself, I myself see not the bottom of it. Uh, would the fountain bo the the of your mind were clear again, that I might water an ass at it. I had rather be a tick in a sheep than such a valiant ignorance. Act 4, scene 1. Troy, the street. Enter from one side Aeneas and servant with a torch. From the other, Paris, Diphobus, Antenor, Diomedes, and others with torch. See who, who is that there? It is the Lord Aeneas. Is this the prince there in person? Had I so good occasion to lie long as you, Prince Paris, nothing but heavenly business should rob my bedmate of my company. Oh, that is my mind too. Good morrow, good Aeneas. A valiant great Aeneas, take his hand. Witness the process of your speech wherein you told how Dimrad, a whole week by days, did hunt you in the field. Health to you, valiant sir, during all questions of the gentle truth. But when I meet you armed, as black defiance, as heart can think, or courage execute. Uh, the one and the other diamond embraces. Our blood, blood is now in calm, and so long health. But when contention and occasion meet, by Jove, I'll play the hunter for thy life with all my force, pursuit, and policy. And thou shalt hunt the lion that will fly with his face backward in human gentleness. Welcome to Troy. Now, by Anachines, Macbeth, and, and Chinese, <laughs> and Chinese's life, welcome indeed. By Venus, and I swear no man alive can love in such a sort the thing he means to kill more excellently. Uh, we sympathize. Jove, let Aeneas live, and uh, if to my sword his fate may be not the glory, a thousand complete corners, courses of the sun. But in my emulous honor, let him die with every joint a wound and that tomorrow. We know each other well. Uh, we do, 
and long to know each other worse. This is a most despiteful, great, a gentle greeting, the nobler, hateful love there I heard of. What business, Lord, so early? I was sent for to the king, but why, I know not. His purpose meets you, tis to bring this great to Cal Calcutt's house and theirs to render him for the infreed Antenor, the fair Creseed. Let us have your company, or if you please, taste there before us. I constantly believe, or rather call my thoughts a certain knowledge. My brother Julius lodges there tonight. Use him and give him note of our approach with the whole poverty. Wherefore, I fear we shall be much unwelcome. That, I assure you, Troilus had rather Troy be born to Greece than Cressid born from Troy. There is no help. The bitter disposition of the time will have it so. On, Lord, we'll follow you. Good morrow, all. And tell me, noble Daimon, faith, tell me true, even in the soul of sound good fellowship, who is your thoughts? Deserve fair Helen best, myself or Menelaus? Both alike. Be men as well to have her that uh, doth uh, seek her, not uh, not making any scripts of her uh, uh, soilier with such a pain and world of change, and you as well to keep her that defend her, not palating the taste of her dishonor with such a costly loss of wealth and friends. He, like a pulling cuckold, would drink up the lease and dregs of a flat, tamed feast. You, like a lecher, out of horse and loins, and are pleased to breed out your inheritors. Both merits poised. Each weights not less nor more, but he, as he, the heavier for a whore. You're too bitter to your country, women. Ah, she's bitter to her country. Hear me, Paris, for every false drop in her body veins, a Grecian's life must have sunk. For every scruple uh, of her contaminated carrion weight, a Trojan hath been slain. Since she could speak, she hath not given so many good words breath as her, for her Greek and Trojans suffered death. Fair Diomed, you do as champion do, dispraise the thing you desire to buy. But we in silence hold this virtue well. We'll not commend what we intend to sell. Here lies our way. Deem too the same. Court of Pandora's help. Enter Troilus and Cressida. Oh dear, trouble not yourself, the morn is cold. Then sweet, my lords, I'll call my uncle down, he shall unbolt the gate. Trouble him not, to bed, to bed, to me kill those pretty eyes, give a soft attachment to thy senses, the infant empty of all thoughts. Good morrow, then. I put it down, to bed. Are you weary of me? <laughs> But that the busy day waked by the lark hath roused the ribald crow, and dreaming night will hide our joys no longer, I would not from thee. Night hath been too brief. Ye shrewd a witch with venomous white cheek stays as tediously as hell, but flies the grasp of love with wings more momentary swift than thought. Will you catch cold that curse? Pretty tarry, you men will never tarry. Oh, foolish Cupid, I might have still held off, and then you would have tarried. Hark, there's one up. 
What's all the doors open here? It is your uncle. Pestilence on him. Now will he be smocking. I shall have such a life. How now? How now? I'll go maidenhead. Here you maid. Here's my cousin, Cressid. Go hang yourself, you naughty mocking uncle. You bring me to do, and then you float me to. Oh, to do? To do what? And to do what? Oh, let her say what? What have I brought you to do? <laughs> come, come, beshrew your heart. You'll ne'er be good, nor suffer others. <laughs> Uh, alas, poor wretch, ah, oh, could a uh, cappuccino, hast thou not slept tonight? Oh, would he not, a naughty man, let it sleep? Uh, uh, bugbear, take him. Did I not tell you? Would he were knocked in the head? Oh. Who's uh, that at door? Good uh, uncle, go and see. My lord, come you again into my chamber. You smile and mock me as I might haughtily. <laughs> come, you're deceived. I think of no such thing. <gasps> How earnestly they knock. Pray you, come in. I would not for half Troy have you seen here. Who's there? What's the matter? Will you beat down the door? Oh, how now? What's the matter? Good morrow, Lord. Good morrow. Oh, who's there? Oh, my Lord, Aeneas. By Martroth, I knew you not. What news with you so early? Is not Prince Troilus here? Here? Oh, what would he do here? Come. He is here, my lord. Do not mm -hmm. deny him. It doth import him much to speak with me. Ah, is he here, say you? Tis more than I know. I'll be sworn. For my own part, I came in late. Ah, what should he do here? Who? Nay, then. Come, come. You'll do him wrong, ere before your wear. You'll be so true to him, to be false to him. Do not you know of him? But yet ye go fetch him hither. Go. No, no. Oh, no. What's the matter? My lord, I scarce have leisure to salute you. My matter is so rash. There is at hand Paris, your brother, and Diphobus, the Grecian diamond, and our Anator, delivered to us and for him with forthwith, ere the first sacrifice, within this hour, we must give up to Diomedes and the Lady Cressida. Is it so concluded? By Priam and the general state of Troy. They are at hand and ready to effect it. Oh, how my achievement mock me! I will go meet them. Uh, my lord Aeneas, we met by chance. You did not find me here. Good, good, my lord. The secret of nature have not more gift in taciturnity. Is possible. No sooner but lost. Ah, uh, the devil take and turn her. Uh, the young prince will go mad. A plague on Antenor. I would they had broke's back. Oh no? What's the matter? Who was here? Ah. Huh? Why saw you so profoundly? What's my lord gone? Tell me, sweet uncle, what's the matter? Would I were as deep under the earth as I am above. Oh, the gods, what's the matter? Prithee, get the end. And would thou hadst ne'er been born, I knew thou wouldst uh, be his death. Oh, poor gentleman, a plague on Antoner. Good uncle, I beseech you, on my knees, I beseech you, what's the matter? 
Thou must be gone, wench. Thou must be gone. Thou art changed for Antenor. Thou must to thy father and be gone from Troilus. Ah, twill be his death. Twill be his bane. He cannot bear it. Oh, you immortal gods, I will not go. Thou must. I will not, uncle. I have forgot my father. I know no touch of consanguinity, no kin, no love, no blood, no soul so near me as the sweet Trollis. Oh, you gods divine, make Cressa's name the very crown of falsehood. If ever she leave Troilus, time, force, and death, do to this body what extremes you can. But the strong base and building of my love is the very center of the earth drawing all things to it. I'll go in and weep. Do, do. Tear my bright hair and scratch my praised cheeks, crack my clear voice with sobs and break my heart with sounding Troilus. I will not go from Troy. Scene three, the same. Speak before Pandora's house. Enter Paris, Troilus, Aeneas, Diphobus, Antenor, and Diomede. It is great morning, and the hour prefixed for her delivery to this valiant Greek comes first upon. Good, my brother Julius, tell you the lady what she is to do, and haste her to the purpose. Walk into her house, I'll bring her to the Grecian presently, and to this hand when I deliver her, I think it's an altar. Thy brother Troilus. A priest there offering to it his own heart. I know what is to love and would. As I shall pity, I shall help. Please you walk in, my lords. Scene four, the same Pandarus house. Enter Pandarus and Cressida. Be moderate, be moderate. Why tell you me of moderation? The grief is fine full perfect that i taste and violenteth in its senses strong and that which causeth it how can i moderate it if i could temporize it with my affection or brew it to a weak and colder palate the like allayment could i my grief my love admits no qualifying dross no more my grief is such a precious loss here 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 he comes. <laughs> oh, Troilus, Troilus. What a pair of spectacles is this. <laughs> Let me embrace too. Oh, heart, as the goodly saying is. Oh, heart, oh, heady heart. Oh, why sighest thou without breaking? And where he answers again, Twas because thou canst not ease thy smart by friendship, nor by speaking. There was never um, an untruer time, like rhyme. <laughs> uh, let us ta cast away nothing, for we may live to have need of such a verse. We see it. We see it. How now, lambs? Cressid, I love thee in so strained a purity that the blessed God is angry with my fancy, more bright in zeal than the devotion which cold lips blow to their deities take thee from me. Have the gods envy? Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Tis too plain a case. And is it true that I must go from Troy? A hateful truth. What? And from Troilus, too? From Troy and Troilus. Is it possible? And suddenly, where injury of chance with back deep taking, jostles roughly by at all time of pause, rudely beguiles our lips of all joint cure forcibly prevents our locked embrasure, 
strangles our dear vows even in the birth of our own laboring breath. We too, but with so many thousand sighs, did by each other, thus poorly turn ourselves with the rude brevity and discharge of one. Injurious time now, when the robber's haste crams his rich thievery up, he knows not how, as many farewells as be stars in heaven, with distinct breath and consigned kisses to them, he fumbles up into it, will lose a dew, scans us with a single famished kiss, this taste is the salt of broken cherry. My lord, is the lady ready? Thank you. Your call. Some say the genius so cries, Come to him that instantly must die. Put them in patience. Put them in patience. She shall come anon. Where are my tears? Rain to lay this wind, or any of my heart will be blown up. By the root. I must then to the Grecians. No remedy. A woeful crescent amongst the merry Greeks. And when shall we see again? Hear me, I love. Be thou but true of heart. I true? How now? What wicked deem is this? Hey, we must use expostulation kind, for it is pardon. I speak not to be thou true as fearing thee. I will throw my glove to death himself, that there's no maculation in thy heart. But be thou true, say I, to fashion in my frequent protestation. Be thou true, and I will see thee. Oh, you shall be exposed, my lord, to dangers as infinite as imminent. But I'll be true. And I'll grow friend with danger. Wear this. And you this glove. When shall I see you? I will corrupt the Grecian sentinels to give thee nightly vacation. But yet... Oh, heavens! Be true again? There, while I speak it, the Grecian youths are full of quality. They're loving, well composed with gifts of nature, flowing and swelling o'er with art and exercise. How novelty may move and part of kind of God be jealous of the witness. She would fall a virtuous sin. She makes me a beard. Oh, heavens, you love me not. I, I am villain then. In this I do not call your faith in question, though mainly as my merit I cannot sing, nor heal the high roll of old, uh, sweet talk, or play a subtle game. Very virtuous all, to which the Grecians are most Prompt and break, but I can't tell that of the race of these there lurks a still and dumb discursive devil the tempt of cunning. Be not, but be not tempted. You think I will? No, but something be done. But not, and sometimes we are devils to ourselves, for when we will tempt the frailty of our powers. Presuming on their change for potency. Hey, good, my lord. Come, kiss them. Brother Trollius. Good brother, come you hither and bring Aeneas and Grecian with you. My lord, will you be true? Ooh, I? Alas, salt. Whilst so others fish with craft for great opinion, I with great truth catch near. Though some with cunning gild their copper prow, truth with plainness I do wear mine bare. Bear not truth. The moral of my wit is plain truth for all the regions. Welcome, Sir Diamond. <clears throat> Here's your lady, which for Antonor we deliver you. The port, Lord, I'll give her to thy hand, then by the way, possess thee what she has. Treat her fair, and by my soul, where he give air, thou stand at mercy of my sword. Name Cressida, thy life shall be a faithful. Priam is in Iliad. 
Fair lady, Chris. So please, you say the thing this prince expert expects. The luster in your eye, heaven in your cheek. Please your fair usage, and to thy night you shall be mistress and command him fully. Grecian, thou dost not use me courteously. To shame the zeal of my petition to thee and praise in her. Tell thee, Lord of Greece, she is as far high soaring o'er thy praises as thou unworthy to be called her servant. I charge thee, you so well, even for my charge, for by the dreadful people, if thou dost not, though the great bulk Achilles be thy guard, I'll cut thy throat. Oh, be not moved, Prince Trollius. Let me be privileged by my place and message to be a speaker free when I am hence. I will answer to my lust and know you, Lord. I will nothing do on charge to her own worth. She shall be prized, but that you say that so. I speak it in my spirit and honor, no. Come to the port, I'll tell thee, Diamond. This brave shall oft make thee to hide thy head. Lady, give me your hand, that we walk. To our own selves, then we are. Hark, Hector's trumpet! How have we spent this morning? The prince must think me tardy and remiss, that soar to ride before him to the field. Tis Trollius' fault. Come, come to field with him. Have a spike ready strike. I, with the bridegroom's fresh alacrity, let us address to tend on Hector's heels. The glory of our Troy doth this day lie on his fair worth and single chivalry. Scene five, the Grecian camp lists set out. Enter Ajax, On, Agamemnon, Achilles, Patroclus, Menelaus, Ulysses, Nestor, and others. Here art thou in appointment fresh and fair, anticipating time with starting courage. Give with thy trumpet a loud note to Troy, thou dreadful Ajax, that the appalled air may pierce the head of the great combatant and hail him hither. Thou trumpet, there is my purse. Now crack thy lungs and split thy brazen pipe. Blow, villain, till thy shepherd bias cheek. Or swell the colic of puffed Achilleon. Come, stretch thy chest and let thy eyes spout blood. Thou blowest. For Hector. Da, 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 da. No trumpet answers. Tis but early days. Is not yon Diomed with Calchas's daughter? Tis he. I ken the manner of his gait. He rises on the toe. That spirit of his in aspiration lifts him from the earth. Is this the lady fretted? Even she. Most dearly welcome to the Greeks, sweet lady. Our general doth salute you with a kiss. Yet is the kindness, but particular, twere better she were kissed in general. And very courtly counsel, I will begin so much for Nestor. I'll take that winter from your lips, fair lady. Achilles bids you welcome. I had good argument for kissing once. Oh, but that's no argument for kissing now. Uh, for this pop Paris and his argument, and thus parted you thus, you are on your argument. No oh, deadly gall and theme of all our scorns, for which we lose our heads to gild his horns. The first was Menelaus' kiss. This mine, Patroclus kisses you. 
Oh, this is Trim. Paris, and I kiss evermore for him. <laughs> I'll have my kiss, sir. Lady, by your leave. <laughs> Do you render or receive? Both take and give. Uh, both take and give. I'll make my match to live. The kiss you take is better than you give. Therefore, no kiss. I'll give you boot. I'll give you three for one. You're an odd man. Give even or give none. An odd man, lady. Every man is odd. No, Paris <laughs> is not. For you know it is true that you are odd and he is even with you. You fillip me on the head. No, I'll be sworn. It were no match. Your nails against his horn. May I, sweet lady, beg a kiss of you? You may. I do desire it. Why beg too? Why, then for Venus' sake, give me a kiss. When Helen is a maid again and his. I am your debtor. Claim it when tis due. Never's my day, and then a kiss of you. Lady, a word I will bring to your father. A woman of quick sense. Fie, fie upon her. There's language in her eye, her cheek, her lip. Nay, her foot speaks. Her wanton spirits look out at every joint and motive of her body. Oh, these encounterers, so glib of tongue, they give a costing welcome ere it comes, and wide unclasp the tables of their thoughts to every ticklish reader. Set them down for sluttish spoils of opportunity and daughters of the game. <laughs> oh, Trojan trumpet. Yonder comes the troop. Hail, all you state of Greece. What shall be done to him that victory commands? Or do you propose a victor shall be known? I will give you the knights that shall to the edge of all extremity pursue each other. Or shall be divided by any voice or order of the field. Hector bade ask. Which way would Hector have had it? He cares not. He'll obey conditions. It has done like Hector, but securely done, a little proudly, and done misprising the knight opposed. If not Achilles, sir, what's your name? What is your if name? Not Achilles, <laughs> nothing. Therefore, Achilles, but where know this, in the extremity of great and little, Valor and pride excel themselves in Hector, the one almost as infinite as all, the other blank as nothing. Weigh him well, and that which looks like pride is courtesy. This Ajax is half made of Hector's blood, in love whereof half Hector stays at home, half heart, half hand, Half Hector comes to seek this blended knight, half Trojan and half Greek. A maiden battle then. Oh, I perceive you. Here is Sir Diomed, go gentle knight. Stand by our Ajax, as you and Lord Aeneas consent upon the order of their fights. So be it, either to the uttermost or else a breath. The combatants, being kin, have stints their strife before their strokes again. They are opposed already. What Trojan is that same that looks so heavy? <clears throat> the youngest son of Priam, a true knight. Not yet mature, yet matchless, firm of word, speaking in deeds and deedless in his tongue. Not soon provoked, nor being provoked, soon comet, his heart and hand both open and both free. For what he has he gives, what thinks he shows, yet gives he not till judgment guide his bounty, nor dignifies an impure thought with breath. Manly is Hector, but more dangerous. 
For Hector, in his blaze of wrath, subscribes to tender objects. But he, in heat of action, is more vindicative than jealous love. They call him Troilus, and on him erect a second hope, as fairly built as Hector. Thus says Aeneas, one that knows the youth even to his inches, and with private soul did in great Ilion thus translate him to me. They are, they are in action, they are in action. Now, Aegis, all thine own. Hector, thou sleepst to wake thee. His blows are well disposed. There, Ajax. You must no more. Princes, enough. So please you. I am not warm yet. Let us fight again. As Hector pleases. Why, then will I no more. Thou art, great lord, my father's sister's son, a cousin German to great Priam's seed. The obligation of our blood forbids a gory emulation twixt us twain. Were thy Comixian, Greek, and Trojan so, that thou couldst say, this hand is Grecian all, and this is Trojan, the sinews of this leg, all Greek, and this all Troy. My mother's blood runs in the in the dexa check, uh, and this this sinister bounds in my father's. By Jove, multipotent, thou should not bear him from the Greekish member, wherein my sword hath not an impression made of our rank feud. But this, but the just God got. Gainsay that any drop that thou borrowest from my, my mother, thy sacred aunt, should try my mortal sword, thy be disdrained. Let me embrace thee, Ajax, by him that thunders, thou shalt lusty arms, thou hast lusty arms. Hector would have them fall upon him thus. Cousin, all honor to thee. I thank thee, Hector. Thou art too gentle and too free a man. I came to kill thee, cousin, and bear hence a great addition earned in thy death. Not Nepalcatus, so mirable. What bright crest, fain with her, uh, her, uh, not to use it. Sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> what fate of uh, her? The tongue, tongue twister. <laughs> yes. Cries. This is he. Would promise to himself a thought of added honor torn from Hector. There here is expectance here from both the sides. What further you will do? Well, we'll answer it. The issue is embracement. Ajax. Farewell. If I might in entreaties find success, as seld I have the chance, I would desire my famous cousin to our Grecian tents. Tis Agamemnon's wish, and great Achilles doth long to see unarmed a valiant Hector. Aeneas, call my brother Troilus to me and signify this loving interview to the expectors of our Trojan part. Desire them home. Give me thy hand, my cousin. I will go eat with thee and see your knights. Great Agamemnon comes to meet us here. The worthiest, worthiest of them all shall be name by name. But for Achilles, mine own searching eyes, shall find him by his large and portly size. Worthy of arms, as welcome as to one that would be rid of such an enemy. But that's no welcome. Understand more clear. What's past and what is to come is strewed, is strewed with husks and formless ruin 
of oblivion. But in this extant moment, faith and trough, strained purely from all hollow biased drawing, bids thee, with most divine integrity, from heart of very heart, great Hector, welcome. I thank thee, most imperious Agamemnon. And my well-famed Lord of Troy, no less to you. Let me confirm my princely brother's greeting, you brace of warlike brothers. <laughs> Come hither. Who must we answer? Uh, the noble Menelaus. Oh, you, my lord? By Mars, his, <laughs> his gauntlet. <laughs> Thanks. Mock not that I affect the untraded oak. Your quantum uh, wife swears still by Venus's glove. She's well, but bade me uh, not commend her to you. Name her not now, sir. She's a gentle thief. Oh, pardon. I offend. I uh, have thou, gallant, gallant Trojan, seen thee oft, laboring for destiny, may cruel mm. way through ranks of Greekish youth, and I have seen thee as hot as Per Perseus, spur thy Phrygian steed. What is it? I think it's Phrygian. Phrygian. Yeah. Phrygian steed, despising many forfeits and subduements. When thou hast hung thy advanced sword, it air. Not letting it decline in the declined that I have said to some my standards by. Lo, Jupiter's is yonder dealing life, and I have seen thee pause and take thy breath when that a ring of Greeks have hemmed therein, like an Olympian wrestling. This have I seen. But this thy confidence still lock and still. I never saw till now. I knew thy grand desire and once fought with him. He was a soldier good. But by great Mars, the captain of us all, never like thee. Oh, let an old man embrace thee and worthy warrior. Welcome to our tent. Tis the old Nestor. Ah, oh, let me embrace thee, good old chronicle. Thou hast so long walked hand in hand with time. Most reverend Nestor, I am glad to clasp thee. I would my arms could match thee in contention as they contend with thee in courtesy. Ah, oh, I would they could. Ha! By this white beard, <laughs> I'd fight with thee tomorrow. Well, welcome. Welcome. I have seen the time. I wonder now how yonder city stands when we have here her base and pillars by us. I know your favor, Lord Ulysses, well. Ah, sir, there's many a Greek and a uh, Trojan dead since first I saw you uh, myself, yourself, and uh, Diomed in uh, Ilion on your Greekish embassy. Sir, I foretold you then what would ensue. My prophecy is but half his journey yet. Uh -huh. For yonder walls that partly front your town, yon towers whose wanton tops do bust the clouds, must kiss their own feet. Ah, I must not believe you. <laughs> There they stand yet, and modestly, I think, uh, the fall of every Phrygian stone will cost the drop of Grecian blood. The end crowns all, and that old common arbitrator, time, will one day end it. So to him we leave it. Most gentle and most valiant Hector, welcome. After the general, I beseech you next to feast with me and see me at my tent. I shall forestall thee, Lord Ulysses, thou. Now, Hector, I have fed mine eyes on thee. I have with exact view perused thee, Hector, and quoted joint by joint. Is this Achilles? 
I am Achilles. Oh, oh stand there. I pray thee, let me look on them. Behold, I feel. Nay, I have done already. Thou art too brief. I will the second time as I would buy thee, view thee limb by limb. Oh, by a, like a book of sport. Thou reads me, or, but there is more in me than thou understandst. Why dost thou so oppress me with thine eye? Tell me, you heavens, in which part of his body shall I destroy him? Whether there, or there, or there, ah. that I may give the local wound a name, and make distinct the very bre breach whereout Hector's great spirit flew. Answer me, heavens! It would discredit the blessed God, the uh, proud, proud man, to answer such a question. Stand again, thinkst thou, to ca catch my life so pleasantly as to uh, pre-nominate uh, in nice conjecture where thou wilt get me dead? I tell thee, yea. Wilt thou as oracle to tell me so? I'll not believe thee. Henceforth, guard thee well, for I'll not kill thee there, nor there, nor there. But by the forge that thou st 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 studied Mars, his helm, I'll kill thee everywhere. Yeah! Or and or, you wisest Grecian, pardon me this brag, his insolence drawn folly from my, from my lips. But I'll endeavor deed to match these words, or may I never do not chafe thee, cousin, and you, Achilles, let these threats alone till accident or purpose bring you to it. You may have every day enough of Hector if you have stomach. The general state, I fear, can scarce entreat you to be odd with him. Oh, well, I pray you, let me, let me see you in the field. We have this pelting war since you refuse the Grecian's cause. Dost thou entreat me, Hector? Tomorrow do I meet thee, fell as death. Tonight, all friends. Thy hand upon that match. First, all you peers of Greece, go to my tent. There, in full convive, we, afterwards, as Hector's leisure and your bounties shall, concur together. Severally entreat him. Beat aloud the tambourines. Let the trumpets blow, that this great soldier may his welcome know. My lord Ulysses, tell me, I beseech you, in what place of the field doth Calchas keep? At Menelaus' tent, most princely Troilus, there Diomed doth feast with him tonight, who neither looks upon the heaven nor earth, but gives all gaze and bent of amorous view on the fair crescent. Tell sweet lord, be bound to you. Tell be bound to you so much after we part the Megamemnon tent. To bring me thither. You shall command me, sir, as gentle tell me of what honor was this Cressida in Troy. Had she no lover there that wails her absence? Oh, sir, uh, so does boasting show their scars a mock Will you walk on, my lord? To what beloved, beloved, is and doth, but still beloved, the fortune is too. Thank you.